20 years in this uh, area. But uh, one thing on my CV that I'll mention is why, as a, a reasonably successful finance person and uh, engineer, uh, uh, I'll move into become an entrepreneur in academics, knowing that the income will be much lower than, uh, than finance, because I was a finance person for big corporations. Uh, you know, I, I was making in the seven dollar figures in the U.S. dollars, right? and, uh, and 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 because because in the sense I was working with many CEOs of many large organizations, big or small, in the North America, and I found that the, this is a very impactful work, meaning that they have to mobilize tens of thousands of people, and sometimes most of the time they fail. After a few years of work, they fail. You know, it, 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 it is not a, a, a secret that 95% of entrepreneurs fail, right? We, we, we all have a dream. We all have a dream of any big products. But the, 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 the overall statistics in the world you know, is about 70% to 95% entrepreneurs in perform. That is a humongous score. You know? But that's not just for small companies. For big companies such as I really go to Nokia or other people, you know, Apple computers, uh, Microsoft, the, 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 uh, the strategy execution odds of success is also 30%. 70% of strategies fail when they perform. Organizations spend a lot of money investing a lot of money into developing a new strategy. And, and most of the times they fail. They fail miserably and they fail. But you know what they're hiding? Because they're such a big company, they can hide their failures into their big account. Success. I have been 20 years, I've been, um, you know, because of this, of this passion to, 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 to know the, the, the root causes of death. Why can't they die? And why such a healthy company such as Nokia die so quickly? It gives us a, 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 a very uh, unique insight, one insight, you know, into the deep mental organization. If you study an average company, there are so many factors, that there are so many confounding factors. So many of you engineers, right? You don't understand the phenomena whereby there are, si there are 1,600 different factors that could involve this phenomena. People have to measure which one matters. But if we can get some phenomena for which we can isolate and study a few causal mechanisms, it makes the you know it makes the science discovery a little bit easier. Okay, so that's the idea behind various research that I do. I do research on innovation in, in China, a lot in China, a lot in India, uh, UK, uh, US, Canada, uh, you name it, Finland. You know, that research is done in Finland. So, 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 so here I'm talking about a very specific case of Nokia, but it's not just, this case is only a metaphor, a metaphor for many, many other cases that we have seen across the world. And uh, uh, after discussing the case of Nokia, I will be uh, uh, generalizing to a more higher level uh, general lessons that I have learned from other organizations. You know, and with what I teach, uh, mainly at INSEAD, uh, you know, in my class, there are, you know, only the people allowed in are the C, people have a C level or something. A, they have to be uh, of certain standing, or the concept of standing to be able to afford the rate at INSEAD. And point number two, you know, uh, they have to have a C something, CIO, CPO, CFO, CEO, whatever C they are. Why? Not because I'm snobbish, but I'm teaching the kind of people who would make a direct impact on the organization. They learn it, they go back immediately, implement it in the organization. That's what I want. I don't want to teach theory for the sake of theory. And uh, up to 2005 even, if you read the business magazines, you know, they would held as the number one company of such agility. This really, you know, it's not just they are innovative, they're also high, extremely high on strategic agility. Meaning what? Meaning that they could develop products very quickly and adapt to very different markets. Right? 
Nokia can 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 sell a a a, 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 a more a, a, a lower local scope to lower markets as well as sending a higher end phones to different markets. They can adapt to different keyboards and languages. You know? While iPhone, look at the iPhone, iPhone they have one or two or three prototypes. You know? They didn't adapt to this to the large extent. You know? There's no such thing as a $10 uh, iPhone, yet Nokia would have the range of prices going to various ranges. Right? Different products, you know, to the extent that you pay, and they can produce very quickly in different colors, different types of products, and every three to six months, they work very hard, it all costs all the world, you know, to, to produce these products. When I show this kind of slide in, um, to my Japanese, to my Chinese executives, they say that, Professor, do you know that back in the year 2000, you know, a Nokia executives would be like almost like a very high status in, in, in China. Why? Because Nokia exports of the smart, of the handphones accounts for a significant proportion of Chinese GDP on exports. Can you believe it? You know? Uh, that, that is the size of this, how important they are. We tend to view Apple as the kingpin of success, right? But we forgot that how fast, you know, uh, history has changed. But in 2008, only 2008, it's not very far ago, right? If you compare the, uh, if, if few financial numbers, Nokia versus Apple, right? Nokia has 40% of the mobile phone, Apple, at that time, you know, is insignificant. Right? So the smart share of the market of smartphone is 45% for Nokia, 5% Apple. Now, let's look at the net profit. We tend to think of uh, Apple as the most ugly in the world. Look at the profit. Half. Right? Numbers speak for themselves. Half. 4.8 billion US dollars versus 10.9 US billion US dollars. Market value. Nokia market value 2008. Not very far ago, you know? 150 billion US dollars. It was a higher market cap than Apple. You, you know, all of you know that you know, Apple a few years later become the highest market cap right? in the world. Right? But at that time, Nokia higher than Apple. Let's put things in perspective, right? Market value, only in three years, did you see Nokia has lost 90% of its market value. Nothing left, right? Okay. Yeah. Why, why the Apple has quite you know, triple its market value, the 330 million US dollars. That is the kind of size of change. By the way, we know that the kind of sense of change in company's fortune that we're talking about. Why would a company of such a high, such agility, you know, die so quickly? You know, if it dies, it has to be, be maybe 10 years, right? When you talk about digital computers or HP or Apple, they die, but they die, or IBM, but they die, but they die a slow death, right? They die of old age, it took 10, 10, 10 to 15 years in decline, isn't it, you know? Digital corporation, that the one found them, HP, yeah, you know? They get sick, but you know, they survive. <laughs> but they get sick, very sicker, right? But they still quite, they could maintain. HP is still alive, you know, you know or Sony for the sake of it, you know. You know they, they are going declining slowly, but they are still maintained in life for 10 to 15 years before they die, you know. The outside story is a very simple. The outside story would be that, uh, that Nokia products is, it was declining in quality, right? You know, if you look at the model of M95, um, M95 E71, it was uh, perceived by uh, users and the market as a fairly, compared with competitors, fairly high in its uh, standing, in this uh, performance. And the uh, 5800 that was perceived by the market as not performing so well, a lot of bugs in the software. And really, the M95 and A has a lot of bugs, you know, it falls the form the work. At that time, the, the iPhone start to pick up and wipe out the business. So it's you know, a surface, uh, if you talk to a journalist, journal business analyst, or financial analyst on the website, you have access to, to inside the company's uh, uh, information, then they will say that you know, the obvious uh, reason is that the obvious uh, Apple was so technically smart. You know, uh, Nokia was technically stupid. 
And, uh, because the, we have to invent the stupid engineers to develop products like this. Right? You know, how does it work? It is it is a simple it's a simple story of uh, inferior technology. Right? Uh, inferior technology caused by stupid engineers at uh, Nokia versus the very smart engineers uh, led it by Steve Jobs and Apple, and that is the story. Yeah, that's the next, the next, right? So that is the uh, service story. Or, 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 or it's not stupid that the heavy engineers at Nokia was fairly out, isn't it? You know, they have the sort of success, they have to become complacent, you know, they look at Apple, they just do not care less. They let their product sink, and then therefore they die. You know? That is kind of complacency story, right? You know, people have access to, to what's happening inside the organization. So luckily, you know, it was that uh, my, my colleague Timo and I you know, was, were able to, uh, to talk to many of the, uh, the in-depth uh, interviews, you know, very honest interviews with people at all levels of Nokia during this organization. Nobody at Nokia for all of them was a shock. Everybody was, was shocked. They lost their job and they did not know why. Even the CEO did not know why. Did not know why. Even, even the CEO, the board of Nokia, the CEO of Nokia, Toshman Keith of Nokia, you know, nobody knew why. You just know that they have been beaten to hell. You know, that's the case. You know, we cannot just tell the story. And the scientists would, uh, would take it. We have to show a lot of witnesses and evidence you know, that show that the case is in fact what it is. Okay, so I've been telling you in the summary before. And then we can have a discussion. I have a QA session. I can have a QA session for you to ask more questions. How, how is it uh, so far? Do you follow me? Yes. So, 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 so we titled this one as the organizations without even knowing it. But there's no, there's no a single, uh, no single centralized, not even the CEO, not even the board, not even the chairman. Uh, nobody, nobody uh, has a complete view of what is going on in the organization. Okay? So we have constructed this story and it was a delusional story. Is that that is that they are caught? You know, everybody is contributing to creating a delusion of themselves. Why they are fighting uh, Apple? And how 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 did they match do so? You know, it's uh, rather to give you the details of the mechanism that led to those this core collective construction of organizational delusion. How good are, you know, people can say, how good is Nokia engineers? By scientific standards, they are much better than, than iPhone engineers. How good? Let's put in some numbers. Between 1992 and 2006, Nokia has deposited over 50,000 patents, international patents. I don't know how Apple is. Well, all we know is that Apple and Samsung and a few other companies still today has to pay 600 million US dollars every year for the use of Nokia patents for this smartphone. Six, can you imagine a business whereby you're already dead, no employees, and you sleep at home, and you get 600 million dollars <laughs> cash a year? This is for the IP, isn't it? For the IP. Fantastic business, isn't it? You know, just uh, do nothing and 600 million US dollars you will check every year, every first. No. January for $600 million of cash in your account. Yeah. Don't have to do anything. Anybody who use it, you sue them. <laughs> <laughs> no? No, we have a lot of funding. No, no, no. That is the size, this is the size of the Nokia's technical capabilities. That's why they believe that they have the, the engineering expertise you know, to kill anybody. Right? They have a lot to know. 20,000 best engineers across the world. That's my from India to China, you know, to the US to, to kill these guys, you know? You know, they can pull them. You know? so, so that the engineers collectively feel fairly, fairly, uh, fairly confident 